It's become a matter of national security, and it could kick the United States back 250 years to a pre-industrial society, and nobody is talking about it. But we're going to talk about it right here in just a few seconds. Hey, President Trump, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, and Senator Schumer all agree on one thing, that they should spend $2 trillion on infrastructure upgrades in the United States because of the state of disrepair the nation is in. But here's my question for them. Who is going to do the work? We are right now in the United States approximately $7 million short in the skilled trades industry alone. For example, the average electrician in the United States right now is 53 years old. That doesn't leave him too many more years to fix stuff. And, of course, the plants coming out of Washington, D.C. are the usual throw more money at it, and that will fix it miraculously. So they're saying to start funding trade schools like we did 50, 60 years ago. But by the time they get done fighting over which party gets credit for that uh, blessing to this country... It's going to be five or ten more years before they get the bill organized and get it voted through the Congress and get it signed by some president. They're going to get five to ten years to roll the money out to the states and the counties and the various school districts around the United States. And, of course, that's because the government for sure is going to ask them, well, what's your plan to use this money? And that could take five years for the bureaucrats to write. And then 13 to 18-year-old kids will finally get in the program. Yay! Of course, the programs will be totally put together and run by educators who have no ideas what the trades are all about, you know, and probably have no skills themselves, little to none anyway. And even if they overcome all those hurdles, we're talking 20 to 25 years before we can start replacing the old timers like my generation with enough people that have some skills to even maintain the level we're currently operating at. So the entire process is doomed from the beginning. Because before we begin to see enough number of kids coming out of the schools with the skills and the knowledge just to replace us old timers and to have an impact here on the infrastructure here in the United States, it's going to take generations for us to get back to even where we are right now, which is pretty much behind the eight ball at this time. If you think about what I'm about to say here right now, you probably won't sleep tonight. As I said, and keep asking the question, who will do the work? We don't even have enough people right now to keep up with the natural disasters that keep happening to us. Hurricane Sandy was seven years ago, and there's people who still aren't back in their homes. And of course, all this happens where? In the northeast of the United States, which is arguably one of the richest places in the entire world with the most access to resources and infrastructure and money, and they can't even get all the homes fixed because there's no one to do the work. Katrina, back in 2005, there are parts of New Orleans that have been finished tearing it down, let alone building it back up, and that was 14 years ago at this point. The fires in California back in 2017, 10,000 structures were destroyed, and as of last night when I did some research, only 399 homes have been rebuilt out of 10,000. I mean, incredible. The flooding in the Midwest two years ago and, and this past year, all those homes destroyed. The hurricanes are all across the Gulf from Florida to Texas over the last five or six years. Who's going to do the work to rebuild all that? The tornadoes in the South and in the Midwest who've taken out entire towns. Who's going to do that work? Millions of people in the United States right now as we're talking aren't even back to square one yet. And we have roads right now that are so deteriorated they cost our trucking industry billions of dollars a year in accelerated depreciation and outright damage to trucks uh, going down the road. Not to mention the billions in damage and accidents experienced each year by the general driving public. Bridges having to be closed and restricted lest they fall down. And how about the ones we miss that do fall? Airports and seaports, 50 years behind the times, old technology, our flight patterns and everything else are a hazard for the traveling public. And all that Washington does is to argue and point the fingers at each other whose fault it is. Millions of Americans are still living in substandard housing that should have been torn down 50 years ago in our inner cities across the United States. And those should have been replaced 50 years ago. Oh, they can eventually vote the money and they most likely will. 
but who is going to do the work? Seven million still short right now, as we said. The reason I say it's a matter of national security, I want you to think about this scenario. Let's say you're the leader of a country called Take Over the Worldica, and I'm the leader of a country called Head in Sandica, also known as Stupakistan. So you want to attack me. What would you do first to attack me, to defeat me? First thing is, you'd interfere with my ability to make war. And the way you would do that is, first you would disrupt my ability to get critical resources by shutting down my airports and my ports. Of course, that'll stop my ability or severely hamper my ability to make repairs each time you bomb me. And of course, you would then tear up with your bombing my roads and bridges and railways. So even if I had resources, I couldn't move them efficiently from the point where they are to the point where they're needed. My factories would be shut down because I either don't have the manpower or I don't have the infrastructure because the young people of my country were sent to fight overseas in some foreign war to protect us or there's nowhere to send them to work because I can't repair the factories or they can't get there. Well, how does anything I just said right now differ from where we are today? Because we flat out don't have enough people to do the work. And right now, it's as if we were being attacked and being thrown back to a pre-industrial stone age in this country. And of course, that means we wouldn't be able to continue to enjoy the lifestyle that Americans have come to enjoy over the years. The time to fix this is right now. We cannot wait any longer because guys like me, in 15 or 20 or 25 years, when we're in our 80s or 90s, we're not going to be wanting to take on apprentices and teach them. But in the next video, we're going to discuss the plan because at the Million Job Movement, we have a plan. And we will fix this not in 20 or 25 years. Our plan is within five to eight years, this will be improved. It will be on its way to being fixed. And this nightmare scenario that's going to keep you up tonight isn't going to happen if we do a few simple basic things. And like I say, we'll discuss that in the next video. If you find what we're doing helpful, please take a moment to uh, just click a like button and leave a comment. If you also like what we're doing and you would like to hear more, please take the time when the button comes up to subscribe to America's Blind Tradesmen, our YouTube channel. And until next time, this is Mike DeZeno, America's Blind Tradesman and the national spokesperson for the Million Job Movement saying stay safe, stay productive, and let's make America skilled again. I don't want to be a third world nation. How about you? See you in the next video. Take care.